Welcome back, Legendary Potato here, and today I'm going to show you guys how you can build your own Hunger Games map for Minecraft. This will apply to all versions of Minecraft, so if you want to make your own Hunger Games world in some sort of way, I'm going to show you guys a really simple and easy way in today's tutorial. Hopefully you guys will enjoy the video if you leave a like on it. It does help out the channel a lot, and lets me know it did help you out in some sort of way, but let's get right into this here. So Hunger Games is a popular PvP minigame where the goal is to be the last person to survive. It's really easy to set up, lots of fun to play, and it's one of the classic minigames that's been around in Minecraft for a very long time. But with that said, let's get into actually making a map. So if you want to make a very basic map, I would recommend that you just set up some sort of random seed, random world, and just go to a place that you find is open, maybe preferably even close to the center of a world. So. Here I am, random seed, and so what I'm going to do is set up everything based around here. Before you do anything though, I would recommend that you do make this a small or classic world if you're on Xbox One or PS4. If you're on any other version of Minecraft, this will already be done for you. But just find a kind of open place that you can work with and kind of set up your spawn area. Before we do any of the actual building of the map, we want to deal with the players spawning in the world. So. What we're going to do, we'll just dig inside this mountain. You can do this wherever you want. It doesn't even have to be inside a mountain. But we want to put the players that die in a place where they can't escape the map. So I'm going to put them inside the mountain. And since I'm going to be playing this on adventure mode, which basically changed the way the spawning mechanics work, uh, I'm able to make a one by one area uh, of bedrock uh, where I can store the players and so that they won't be able to escape back into the world. So I'm going to put them right in here. I'm going to set up some sort of bedrock barrier for them. So now that I have this bedrock enclosure, what I'm just going to do quickly is set the world spawn point to right here inside of this place. And so that'll basically make it so that players will spawn inside of here. And so if you do this method, that means you're going to have to teleport players into the map manually when you want to put them into your pods, which we'll be making in just a moment. But there are ways to make these things a little bit closer to being fully automated, uh, but never quite uh, entirely. So I'm going to show you guys how to do all that sort of stuff now that it's all settled there. But that's going to be where your players spawn in, so you can just hide that away and not really worry about it much after that. Um, you can set up your map uh, accordingly now. Now assuming you have your wide open field, we're going to set up the cornucopia, which is the stuff where you find your loot. Uh, around are going to be the pods where the players are going to start. And so this is going to be the most crucial part about your map. So you want to place it in a nice effective area, and you also want to give it enough space, and we're going to talk about all that sort of stuff. So just find a space and find really open spot. I think actually over here, uh, might be a really good location as well. This is already flat enough for us uh, with just a little bit more land clearing It would be perfect. Okay, so I flattened the area a little bit more I've gotten rid of some trees to open it up a little bit more I think I'm gonna get rid of these two birch trees as well So don't be afraid to clear out some trees around it You want this place to be as open as possible You want to give a lot of space for players to run around around here as this is going to be the like main area where players will meet up um, and I think I'll get rid of this big tree as well, just so it's just a little bit more open and then I'll be happy with that. But I'd recommend maybe like a 30 by 30 area, just kind of flattened out as much as possible. Um, just so you give a lot of leeway of how you want to build things. Okay, so next I'm going to clear out all the grass really quickly with just some water. Um, this will just kind of make it a lot more easy to build. Uh, when everything's out of the way, I can kind of get an idea of how much space I have. So you can easily just go around with a water bucket and a normal bucket and just clear these up really quickly. Okay, so now we have a large open area to work with. We have plenty of space. So let's start off with the cornucopia. That's going to be where all the main chests are. So grab yourself some building blocks. I'm going to use some uh, maybe stone bricks and maybe stone slabs. So those would be right there. Uh, but you can use whatever blocks you'd like. Uh, it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, just get kind of something you want to work with. So just kind of go to the center of your opened up area. I mean, obviously you don't have to be too precise, uh, but just somewhere where it's like there's a lot of distance um, for each direction. So mine would be probably around here. So that'll be where the center of the cornucopia is. Like there's plenty of space on each side and I can always expand out more on each of them if I need to as well. So next I'm going to set up uh, a random configuration of a couple chests. I'd recommend maybe four, five, uh, maybe not more than 10 though. So somewhere in the range of four to 10 chests. I'm gonna do five chests because that's my personal favorite. Um, but the amount of chests and what you put in the chests is crucial to the, the map you do. 
Um, so I'm just going to kind of play around with the design, make it a little fancy. Uh, but you don't have to do all of these steps, I just like making my maps look nice. Instead, you can also choose to add some other things, such as furnaces, enchantment tables, anvils, um, whatever you'd like to use. I don't think anvils will be used too much, uh, but enchantment tables and furnaces could actually come really in handy. So if you really wanted to, you could also replace that chest and uh, put in uh, an enchantment table instead, or maybe even put in furnaces here. Um, so lots of customization options as well, so if you like this sort of configuration, if you want to take advantage of this, um, then you can do that as well. Okay, so once you're happy with your design, I think I'm happy with what I have set up here. We're going to then mark out pods. So let's go ahead and start setting those up. You want to make sure those are all equally distant. Um, so you're probably going to do about four, maybe eight pods. I assume you're probably going to do with eight, so... Uh, let's go ahead and start making those. When I'm marking out pods, I like to use two alternating colors to kind of uh, coordinate how far I want them to be. So I'll do this first one um, on the shortest side at least so I know how far I can go. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How do I like that? So 11. Um, like you want to have a decent distance. So this is about six black uh, concretes uh, so if I went into this distance on each side so if the players start at this distance here they'd have to about uh, they'd have to run about 11 blocks before they can open the chest uh, which seems like a, a good distance to me so let's go ahead and do that on each side okay so we've got four sides laid out but we still have these diagonal signs to do here and so you could just go and do the the corners of these and go to here so it'd probably be around uh, back here uh, but that actually is quite a far distance, so you could actually cut it back a little bit and make it a little bit more uh, circular uh, by doing it about here. So a few blocks closer in, uh, I like to do it so it's a little bit more circle. Um, so that being ar around here, uh, I just kind of went in uh, an extra two uh, concretes there and did that. So now that we have distances set up, it'll probably look something like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up each of the ponds. So we'll make this sort of shape here with each of these, um, like that. And we'll do them on all eight of them. And so we're going to use pistons to activate these. And I'll show you guys how to do the redstone uh, in another world, just so it looks a little bit more simple. So I don't have to do the digging underground. I can show you guys what it looks like. There, so your pods probably look something like this. And so we can dig down a few blocks. These are going to be where your players sit, right around here. And so the pistons will extend and we'll make it up to here so they can immediately run and jump out. Um, and you can even decorate these blocks if you like to. Since you're going to see these, you might want to make those look nice. Uh, but this block here is going to be where they're standing. And then below here, so that being here, this is going to be where your sticky or normal piston can be. You don't have to use a sticky piston just because you probably won't need to reuse the pods. So you can just have a normal piston and then you won't have to worry about it. I just like using sticky pistons though. So I'd recommend you set up the pistons in each of these. So just dig down a few blocks, put in your piston, put in your block, and then it should be facing down here like this. And so you want to go and do that to each of these. So dig down a few here, put in sticky, this, and you can decorate the sides. So now that you've got all those pistons set up like that, uh, we're going to do the redstone. I'm going to do it in another world, but don't worry, the redstone's not all that complicated. I'm going to show you guys how to set it up really easily, so let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so here we are. We have a very similar setup uh, to before, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up the redstone, and so you want to determine a host pod, so that being I'm going to choose this pod. So this is going to be the pod that you're going to sit in. The maker of the map sits in here and they decide when the game starts. And so we'll put down a lever and you probably want to put down something to signify this is a host pod. So maybe a sign that says host pod. So you can make it look like that. You can make it look a little bit more fancy, but at least so it's clear that you know that it's yours. So once you've set that up, we're going to take this lever input and we're going to make our redstone based off all of that. So what we're going to do, get some redstone, get redstone torches and repeaters. That's really all you're going to need. And so we can bring it from right here. And so I believe doing this will actually activate this. So it'll activate immediately. Then we can bring that line off to the other pods. So let's start off by making a straight line that goes all the way across to the opposite pod right over here. 
right here. So that'll go to that piston. And so then we can put down a bunch of redstone and also occasionally putting in repeaters so that we do not lose the signal either. Personally, I like putting a block in the center with the redstone repeater going into it. That at least seems to work for me. I don't know if it'll activate in this situation, but if it doesn't, I can always just put one in halfway. So we can keep testing if this works uh, by putting down this, and so it'll activate immediately. But what we can do to make this stay uh, on forever is by putting down a repeater and doing that. And so that way, this will always stay activated. So as you can see, even though the lever is gone, this redstone will stay here forever continuously. It's like a continuous clock that won't ever end. And so now we can see is that it did not reach this piston over here, but we can easily fix that by just putting a repeater right there. So we're going to keep this redstone on for the time being just so we can test that everything activates. So let's continue from here. We're going to go out this way until we reach the pods on each side as well and do the same thing we just did before. Okay, so now we have a bunch of redstone going on. As you can see, these are going to each of these, but we still have these diagonal ones we have to do. And so we can easily set these up as well by going off of these on each side. So if we do two here and two on this side as well, oops, I messed that up. So that being these two points, uh, then we can make a, a really nice and simple shape here. And we can just put these in. So I'd put a redstone repeater right here, and then I would just continue this line right to the piston. So there we go, every single piston we have is now extended. So make sure that every single piston here is working. And so what we can do is we can break a piece of redstone on this clock that will deactivate everything. And so as you can see, they go all back down. So that's why I use this sticky piston so you don't have to place the blocks back when you're testing it. So we can place the lever right back here, test that it all activates and these all go up. So as you can see, I'll go right there. So. I can break this and turn it back off. So this will be a one-time thing. Of course, if you want to disable that, you can just break the redstone. So that's really it for the redstone. You don't have to worry about anything else. This will be everything that you need to do. Um, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. It really wasn't difficult. It's just connecting redstone lines up to each of the pistons and testing that they all do work correctly. So anyways, all the redstone's done. Let's go back into our normal world. Okay, so we're back in the world. We can start removing a bunch of things. We can remove all of the concrete here. We don't need this anymore. We have our pistons set up. So let's go ahead and take the time to do all of this. That's basically the core design of the cornucopia. You can add so much more to it if you'd like. Uh, but this is just a basic tutorial, but other than that, you can go along with your creative freedom with that. But now let's get into the chest. So these are going to what uh, are going to be what makes and breaks your map. So what we've got here, we got four chests. We also have furnaces if you want to stock those up as well. Um, so whatever you decide to use, uh, I do recommend you don't keep it overpowered. You keep it uh, slightly underpowered. You want to give players, you know, some good items to start off with, but nothing too uh, super stacked so they're set for the rest of the game. So something to, you know, start the game off. Generally, what I like to stick to is leather armor, wooden tools, and maybe some arrows and some low-end food is usually a good way to go. If you want players to craft items, let's say you put crafting tables around the world as well. So let's say these are included in the map in some sort of way or even in the spawn, whatever reason you want to have these. Um, then you can also put in some of these materials. So you can put in iron ingots, gold, sticks, leather, whatever else you can craft items with, maybe some coal, um, whatever you want. But of course, keeping them in low qu uh, quantity, so maybe like one per chest, one per chest, one per chest one or two per chest, one per chest, something like that. So you can stock these up with a bunch of random items as well. So let's go ahead and fill in these chests together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid using the iron in the center. I'm going to put one piece of gold in every single one of these chests. So I'll just put them in randomly, of course. 
Um, you want to keep each of the chests fair so that every player has a equal advantage. Um, maybe not stacking one chest to be better than the rest. So I like just placing them all randomly but keeping the items very similar. I'll put in two pieces of leather into each of the chests, but you can also vary. Maybe you want uh, two in one of them and maybe one in the other two. So I'll do one in that one. I'll do two in this one and then one in the next one. And so you can repeat this. You can put in whatever materials you'd like. I'll put in a stick as well to each of these. Once you're happy with all the materials you put in your chest, next we're going to put in low end food and low end weapons. So that being a wooden sword and wooden axe I'll use. So I'll put in two things of watermelon and a cookie, and then I'll put in uh, some sort of weapon. So I'll put in a wooden sword right there. So I like to scatter the items around a little bit, just kind of makes it a little bit harder for players to grab all the items at once. So it'll be kind of more chaotic. And so I'll just go to each of these chests. I'll put the axe in this one, put in some watermelon and a cookie. So there we go, tons of food, tons of materials, and whatever they can grab, of course. And I'm just going to repeat these in all the chests here. Really easy to set up. So, uh, as you can see, they really start to stock up and it looks nice as well, the items in there. So, there we go. I think I'm happy with that. Put in a cookie. Uh, so now I believe every chest has uh, a fair chance of getting some sort of thing. And if you have eight players, then only four of those players will get some sort of item to start. So, makes it really chaotic to start off there. You could also put a cooked item into the furnace, so if you wanted to put in like a piece of wood, cook a potato in there so a player could get a potato uh, out of a furnace, they could do that as well. Just having a bunch of loot options I think is pretty neat so they can have a chance to uh, grab a cooked potato if they like as well, which is a great food source, gives you 2.5 hunger, uh, so it could actually be really helpful as well if the players think to reach inside of there. One more material I forgot to mention as well that would be a good one is putting in lapis. Since if you're going to have an enchantment table like I do in my case, having lapis could actually be really helpful in case they want to do some sort of uh, low end enchantment. Since there's no enchanted books, they'll only be able to do uh, level one one of course. So you can grab some lapis in case they want it, which I think is quite nice. So gives them a little bit of an opportunity to do that. And so that's the cornucopia done. You can make it as complex or as simple as you want. I kept mine uh, relatively simple, a little bit more added to it. Um, but yeah, you can do as much as you'd like with it. But now we gotta do chess around the entire world around us. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can do that and make it fair. So I'm hoping by this point you haven't explored your map fully yet. If you have, then it might make this a little bit more difficult. Just be aware of where you have and haven't gone yet. So here's the cornucopia, here's the corn, it's just so you don't forget. Um, I can even set up a beacon too in case I want to find it later because it could be a little hard to find this. So I'll set up a temporary beacon. You don't have to keep this here, but I'm going to put one down just so I can find this place later. But what we need to do is place down chests all around the world so players can run around the map and try and gather resources. And this might take a little while, it may take an hour, maybe two hours to do. Uh, but as long as you put chests in uh, fair places to get all around the map pretty equally, then you'll have a, a really good map going for you. So for example, I could throw a chest right up here and then I can just throw in whatever I'd like. So if I want to throw in, let's say, uh, some sort of leather armor, I can throw in maybe an arrow and then some sort of food, whatever you want. And you just kind of repeat this over and over again. You just kind of throw in uh, random items, kind of spread them out, do whatever you want. Uh, and just do this over and over again. Just making sure that you don't stack any chests uh, ridiculously, but maybe making some chests more rewarding than others. So like this is, you know, it's a pretty good chest. It's nothing too crazy. Um, and But if we went to a chest maybe like way over this way, let's say somebody managed to get over here. This is kind of a cool spot. I actually like that. Let's say a player manages to get this chest, which is a little awkward to get to, I think. Yeah, you'd have to like climb all awkwardly like along the trees. So let's say you get this chest. We'll make this one a little bit more rewarding. We'll give them one diamond, uh, a gold, feather, stick, leather, and we'll just throw in a bunch of this stuff as well. So make it a little rewarding. Uh, you can throw in diamonds. I'd recommend you don't put in too many, um, but it makes it rewarding for a player to kill somebody else with the diamond. Then they have an opportunity to even uh, get a diamond sword as well, which uh, never give a player a diamond sword. Make them craft it. Same thing with iron sword and... Um, they won't ever craft a stone sword, so maybe make those a rare thing to find. But mostly you want them to have wooden tools at best to fight with. 
uh, and I'll throw in some other materials. We'll throw in, um, we'll throw in an apple just as kind of a food thing. And yeah, that's not bad. You can also use potions. I'd recommend using the low end potions. So maybe just using instant damage one instead of instant damage two, for example. Uh, or even using lingering potions, however you'd like to do it. But you just keep doing this over and over again. You guys get the idea, of course. I'm not going to do every single chest on the map. But you just do this and you just find good spread out places to do them. And you explore the map as you go along. If you want to make the map more interesting as well, you can add your own custom structures. So let's say we wanted to add some sort of uh, fancy building here. Let's say it's like this rundown building. And so you want to have some sort of rewarding item in here. You want to do that. Um, then that's very easy to do as well. You can just kind of set up some sort of quick, easy building. You don't have to put too much time into them, but if you really want to, then you can do that as well. Um, just something so the player sees something, they might go towards it and try to get some loot from there. Uh, but I'm not going to be too specific about anything. I'm just going to kind of place some blocks and just kind of throw some stuff together. And so, yeah, here's just something we have. So here's the thing. Maybe we can throw a chest up here. But just like some landmarks on the map might be cool. If you just throw these around every now and then, uh, that might be cool, of course. Or even uh, ways to do parkour. So like if you have them do some sort of parkour thing, like a short little thing, uh, then that's kind of cool as well. Um, but you can make them as big or as small as you want. Like, this is a tiny structure. It's nothing, really. But you can make uh, really giant buildings if you wanted to. Um, and just kind of spread them out. Don't make them too frequent in one area. Like, go to another part of the world uh, if you want to do another one. Let's say we want to build another structure over here. It doesn't even have to be the same looking structure. We could have, like, a, uh, some sort of house over here if we really wanted to. So, I don't know. I just kind of set up a quick destroyed house. There's not really much that remains of it. Uh, but you can be as creative as you want with this. There's really no restrictions to this. Just make sure your chests are all fair and um, everything like that. Maybe even making sure there's no caves where players can get stuck. Um, I guess a good example would be maybe something like this. You can just quickly close this up really quickly and, you know, no risk of that. Um, I don't like sometimes there's a lot of caves that spawn where you can't get out unless if you like this, for example. If you get stuck in here, uh, that might be a problem. So. I mean, it can make you a vulnerable tar uh, target. You guess you could go in the lava, but if you don't want to risk that, you just want players to run around, you can just cover up this entire ravine, for example, so you can take the time to do all of that. Uh, but there's a lot of caves. Chances are you won't find them all that players can get stuck. Um, but it does help the map if you don't let players get stuck because then they can't play and it's just kind of bad. So yeah, in general, it's a good idea to cover up some of your caves, at least if you don't want players going inside of them because maybe they could go down to like the bottom of the world. And that's not really the whole objective of Hunger Games. You don't want players to start going mining and everything like that. You want them to stay on the surface and play it like it's a Hunger Games map. So uh, just covering up spots that you see, especially around the spawn, uh, is a good idea just so you can uh, less uh, be less worried about it. So look at that. That's a little better. A little less worried about that. So once you've placed chests all around your world, you have your entire map discovered, um, unlike mine. So you've gone around the map, you've done everything. So you've covered every corner. You feel like you've put dynamic chests everywhere. You feel like everything's great. Um, then you can try testing your map out. You can invite some friends, see how it all works out, of course. And it might be good to go. Home Games is really not a hard mini game to make. You just set these things up and you're really all set at that point. Um, so yeah, it's a fun mini game and you can play this as many times as you like. Of course, you can just reset the map and they're, they're really not hard to make. You can make tons of these, so you can make more than one. Um, but hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hopefully this was helpful to you in some sort of way, of course. Um, Hunger Games, it can be a little bit confusing, especially the redstone if you're not too redstone savvy. Um, I made it all simple and easy to follow, hopefully. Uh, if you guys want to see more videos like these, then be sure you do subscribe and uh, like the video as well. It does show the support uh, that it did help you. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know down in the comments section what you guys thought of this video. If you guys made your own Hunger Games map, uh, let me know as well. But I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, guys, and peace out.